Uh, well, I had just moved to Los Angeles to become an actor like so many people do, millions of people do, and uh, I uh, was in town for just about three months and I saw an open casting call for a TV show, it wasn't called Power Rangers at the time, but they were just looking for the character that I auditioned for, originally was the Red Ranger, but they called him Victor, and they just wanted somebody that had a Jason Priestley look, and back in the 90s I kind of looked like Jason Priestley, so I went in and I read for that. Uh, I didn't end up getting that role, but I had eight auditions, and I ended up, uh, after eight auditions, getting the role of Billy the Blue Ranger. <laughs> yeah, filming the TV show uh, was nonstop. Um, Fox Kids at the time in the 90s had picked up the show for 40 episodes, and the show was going to air five days a week, so we really had to crank out a lot of TV shows. So we filmed almost a whole season before the show even started airing and typically we would for, uh, film four episodes at a time and um, it's a little confusing to f uh, film four episodes at a time so because you have to do so many wardrobe changes and things like that so we would film everything we needed to in the command center for those four episodes and we'd move to the juice bar and film everything for those four episodes in the juice bar and we'd rotate around all of our sets and then go film out on location so it was pretty intense. We always had 12 to 15 hour filming days, uh, but it was a lot of fun. Of course, I mean, uh, when you spend 15 hours a day with people, they become your family. So all my co-stars are like my brothers and sisters. Of course, we'd have brother and sisterly fights, you know, but you get over that in 10 minutes and you move on and you're happy together again. But yeah, I mean, we all started off together and uh, so we get to go through this whole becoming a celebrity process first television show process, all of that together. So it's like, a, it's an experience that, you know, you'll never forget and you don't forget the people that you're doing it with. So we've been lucky enough to all remain friends all these years, 20 some years later. Uh, for me, again, since we filmed like a whole season almost before it started airing, we really didn't know what to expect, but I guess from the moment it aired, it became number one. And in Los Angeles, uh, we were supposed to go to Universal Studios and do uh, one live show. Uh, and what happened was we ended up like selling out the park within, uh, I believe, an hour. And we caused a 10-mile traffic jam on the 101 freeway in Los Angeles, which is a really big deal. And they had to shut down Universal Studios. And instead of doing one show, we ended up doing seven shows to try to uh, make everybody happy because there were so many people that got into the park that came for that one show and they moved they moved us to a bigger auditorium it was like this huge huge deal but uh, that's when we knew we got it we got a hit on our hands so uh, the short film uh, based on Power Rangers that got like 12 million hits like uh, overnight basically I mean, obviously it's really dark and gritty and bloody and lots of death um, and all the Power Rangers die basically. Um, I thought it was well executed, I thought the production value was great, I thought it was a creative story, but for me it's a little too violent still for Power Rangers. I don't think all the Power Rangers would die at the shot of a gun. and. Uh, you know, I guess most of us worry that if kids were to type in Power Rangers and that on the internet and that came up, that's not what we want kids to see in terms of Power Rangers. But I, I personally thought it was good in terms of all the production value, story-wise and all that as an adult, but again, Power Rangers has been geared towards kids, so I just want to make sure they don't see something like that. Well, I think my favorite moment has evolved over the last 20 years, uh, kind of like to what's going on now. I mean, the fact that I get to travel around the world and go to tons of different Comic Cons throughout the world and meet people in their teens to 35 and they tell me how Power Rangers has affected their life or influenced them in some way, like they became martial artists or because I played the nerd and the smart guy, people became doctors and scientists and lawyers. 
So I feel very humbled by all of that. And to think that we have this legacy 20 some years later and people still relate to us, it's, it's really exciting. And so, I mean, you can't ask for a better gift than that, to put a smile on people's faces.